I'm Cheryl Ackeson. Welcome to Full Measure. Today we begin with the story of an investment advisor from Philadelphia who stumbled onto one of the biggest stories about the Affordable Care Act to date. His name is Rich Weinstein, and he helped expose a startling set of videos that changed how many Americans view Obamacare. Though publicly available, these remarkable videos have only rarely been seen, getting just a few hundred clicks. On them, a key Obamacare advisor admits they intentionally misled voters whom he called stupid. Today, Weinstein tells how he dug up the videos as a citizen journalist and warns of more trouble ahead. Back in 2013, uh, I was a victim of, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. So late in 2013, we got the email notice from the insurance company saying that our plan was no longer ACA compliant. Uh, I had believed at that point that I wouldn't lose my plan based on what the administration and everybody was saying about the Affordable Care Act. Um, at that point, I kind of decided to get involved and figure out what was really going on. So Weinstein got on the internet and started digging. What he found was a group of Obamacare advisors referred to as architects. I started noticing more in the news that these people called architects were out there basically trying to influence public opinion. And I figured these architect people were, they were mostly academics, and I thought maybe they would leave a, uh, a trail of breadcrumbs for me to figure out what was going on. The breadcrumbs led to revealing videos in the public record, but largely unknown to the average American. One star in these videos was Obamacare architect Jonathan Gruber, an economist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Look, I wish Mark was right. We can make it all transparent, but I'd rather have this law than not. In a series of remarkable policy talks at conferences and in academic settings, Gruber seems to brag that Obamacare only passed through its lack of transparency and the stupidity of voters. For example, Gruber says he and other backers of Obamacare hid the fact that it would be costly to healthy Americans. If you had a law which said healthy people are going to pay in, it made explicit that healthy people pay in and sick people get money, it would not have passed. Okay, just like the people, transparent, lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to get anything to pass. What I mean by that is what the affordable... But it's another group or video that Weinstein says made him shiver. A video that foreshadows a little-known sea change in U.S. tax structure mandated under Obamacare. When I realized they were going after that, it, the hairs in the back of my neck stood up. Like, why, why haven't I heard this before? It's a very clever, you know, basically exploitation of the, of, the, of the lack of economic understanding of the American voter. When he's talking about the lack of basic economic understanding of the American people, when he's talking about the American people being stupid, he's pretty much talking about the Cadillac tax. Weinstein wondered, what is the Cadillac tax? That was explained in another video he discovered, this one featuring Obamacare architect Ezekiel Emanuel in 2014. Emanuel said the Cadillac tax would go after a little-known tax break millions of Americans get on their work insurance. It is the single biggest tax break in the American tax code. It's worth $250 billion. To compare, for those of you who want to keep track, the uh, mortgage deduction, sacrosanct, $70 billion. And it took me some time to figure it out, but I realized that they, they were going after that tax break and not, people are going to lose their tax break without knowing they were losing their tax break. It's incredible. Weinstein learned that since World War II, Americans' health insurance benefits from work haven't been taxed as income. The Obamacare Cadillac tax will change that. It slaps a 40% tax on work-provided insurance policies valued above $10,200 for an individual or $27,500 for a family. For example, say your individual plan costs $15,200. You'll pay 40% of the amount over $10,200. That's 40% of $5,000, which means an extra $2,000 to the IRS at the end of the year. In another video Weinstein found, Emanuel describes how he had to convince President Obama and his political team to support the tax. The other side inside the White House, the other part of the health team, and especially the political team, which David Axelrod headed up, hated this idea. 
One reason they hated it, Emanuel explains, is because in 2008, Obama's Republican opponent, John McCain, proposed eliminating the tax benefit, in effect imposing a giant new tax, and at that time, Obama was against it. John McCain calls these plans Cadillac plans. Now, in some cases, it may be that a corporate CEO is getting too good a deal. But what if you're a line worker making a good American car like the Cadillac? What if you're one of the steel workers who are working right here in Newport News? And you've given up wage increases in exchange for better health care. Well, Senator McCain believes you should pay higher taxes, too. The bottom line, the better your health care plan, the harder you fought for your good benefits, the higher the taxes you'll pay under John McCain's plan. But now, under Obamacare, he'd be imposing exactly what he criticized McCain for proposing, a massive tax hike on American workers' health insurance. Emanuel would later reveal how it took some convincing to get the president to go along. The president campaigned against John McCain, who wanted to get rid of the tax exclusion entirely, with over $100 million worth of ads saying, you know, the Republicans are going to tax your health benefits for the first time ever. And this was an anathema. The president was going to go back on his word. They wanted to get at your tax break, and they couldn't do it overtly because Senator Obama in 2008 spent $100 million destroying John McCain. Emmanuel goes on to say in the video that he helped convince President Obama to impose the Cadillac tax on American workers with the idea that it would reduce health care costs. But how to convince the public to accept a huge new tax? Gruber says they decided to use wordplay. The public would be told it was a tax on insurance plans rather than consumers. Calling it a tax on insurance plans rather than a tax on people, and we all know it's really a tax on people who hold those insurance plans. We said, well, that's pretty much the same thing. But why does it matter? I said, you'll see. And they were both in that past. Because the American voters are too stupid to understand the difference. <laughs> we just tax the insurance companies. They pass it on higher prices. That offsets the tax break we get. It ends up being the same thing. They were going to be able to tax the American public, but not call it a tax on the American public. Well, they were going to tax the American public without the American public knowing it was a tax on the American public because they were going to put the tax on the insurance plan which would then be passed through to the American public through premium increases. After some of Weinstein's stunning video discoveries were reported on the news in 2014, Gruber apologized and called his remarks inexcusably arrogant. In excerpts of these videos, I'm shown making a series of glib, thoughtless, and sometimes downright insulting comments. I know better, I'm embarrassed, and I'm sorry. Both Gruber and Emanuel declined comment for this report. President Obama has said he does not agree with Gruber's assessment of the American public's intellect and that the former advisor's views do not reflect the process. The White House wouldn't offer further comment. As for Weinstein, he sees the future, not because he's clairvoyant, but because the Obamacare architects laid it all out in those videos. He says the looming Cadillac tax will cause employers to drop insurance plans, more Americans will be forced to buy policies on the Obamacare exchange, where premiums and deductibles are quickly rising. And the high-wage employees will not have the benefit of a uh, subsidy. The lower-wage employees will, which turns a regressive policy into a progressive policy. Um, I kind of jokingly refer to it as the Super Bowl of, of progressive politics, because you're going to go from regressive to progressive, and people aren't even going to know what hit them. Everything I know about this came from people on the left. It came from Jonathan Gruber. It came from Zeke Emanuel. It came from other uh, archit architects or other academics. It's their words, and that's kind of the strength of what I've been able to find. My words really aren't important. It's their words. It, it's all there on video. You know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever, but basically that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. The Cadillac tax was supposed to start in 2018, but as word of it has sunk in, it's become so unpopular among Democrats, Republicans, corporations, and unions that Congress voted to postpone it until 2020. Problem is, many employers are already anticipating it and adjusting by downgrading or even canceling policies they offer at work. Next on Full Measure, we visit a terrorist hotbed. It's a neighborhood in Belgium nicknamed Jihad Central. Scott Thuman explains how it figures into the most recent terrorist attack and many others.